Hello and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 31st of May 2017. Uh, first of all, my apologies for, for not being available to do these symposiums live. Um, I've just been incredibly busy uh, doing security work these past couple of weeks. Um, so I wanted to record this uh, one evening when I had a bit of time and, uh, and tonight was the night. Um, I wrote to, to everyone and asked for a little bit of input so that I could uh, form today's symposium and I got uh, four responses and so I'm going to simply walk through these four responses. I think that'll fill out the um, the entire session. So to begin off with, I had a, a comment from uh, Dimitri regarding uh, how to uh, draw rectangles. And um, so we'll start with that. But if you have a quick look, you can see that if we zoom in, that the rectangle that is being drawn automatically is only encompassing the wick of a given area. And this, the indicator has actually always been doing that, but now it's only visible because of the rectangle. Previously, there had been a, a line projected from, from this candle here and projected into the future, but now you can actually see very clearly that um, it's only the wick being drawn. Um, and so, I just wanted to uh, address that and, dis and discuss why I've done that and also how to draw draw areas of supply and demand or how to mark them off, sorry, using the uh, the rectangle drawing tool. So before we go on, let's find a, a nice area that we can consider to look at. And we have one, we have one here. Um, and this one is this is not necessarily a good area, but it's just a, it's a good illustrative uh, area. So we'll use this for this example. And so if we have a close look, you can see that um, price rallied up here and it accumulated for one, two, three, four candles, and then it sold off. And so ideally, when you want to draw the rectangle, use the rectangle to, to show you where you want to have your entry and your stop, I mean, you have to start with the candle that may or may not be green and walk backwards and do the whole, uh, ask the series of questions regarding the accumulation. So we'll do that quickly. So you find the green candle here and then you go back and you say, are you an accumulation candle? And this one is not, has not been identified as an accumulation candle, but it is an accumulation candle more or less. Um, the indicator doesn't like what's going on inside this candle, which is why it wasn't flagged, but it doesn't mean that it's not one. Um, the indicator isn't perfect. And so um, we'll consider this one to be accumulation candle. So you go here and you say, is this an accumulation candle? And you say, yes, it is. Is the range of the body within the range of the previous candle? And you can see it is. I mean, the high of the body is at the high of this candle roughly, and the low is also above the low which brings us to the next candle. Then you say, is the body of this candle within the range of the previous? Yes, it is. Is the body of this candle within the range of the previous? No, it is not. Um, what does that mean? Well, that means that we have a continuation pattern, a micro continuation pattern. We have accumulation, we have price dropping, accumulating, and then dropping again. And this is just a smaller drop. If you go to the hourly chart or the four hour chart for that matter, you'll probably see uh, this a whole lot clearer. And so, Asking these questions will enable us to uh, differentiate between uh, parents and children's and continuation patterns. And so for this one, this is a child and this is a parent. So what we'll do is we'll mark off the parent like this. And this is the one that we'll expect to see the reaction on. We could have gone like this and just marked off the whole area like so. but when the child is so close to the parent, then it's then you can almost always put it on the parent like that. And why is that? Well, the reason this is the case is because uh, this is not even supply. This is a reaction to supply, which is this here. This is supply, this is a reaction to supply. So we don't expect price to come and stop at the reaction of supply. It did here and we had a, a, a nice we would have got a nice trade out of it, but this is not supply. This is simply uh, orders being filled. This is a picture of orders being filled. And when they're satisfied, then they move away like so. So we have supply. We have a reaction to the supply. This is the first test back. Um, 
and this is a second test back and, the, and this level didn't hold so price kept moving higher and so I mean that was a one example let's see if we can find another example that's perhaps um, a little bit more complicated um, okay so let's have a look at this one here this is not supply either where did it go but it's a good it's a good example okay so we have you can see we have a top here and at the top we have these white candles if I zoom out of it you can see them clearer here they are and then we have an extended range candle again this is not green but it's extended and uh, the body is pretty big on this candle in relation to the previous candles and so this could be uh, could be green but the indicator has pretty strict rules and these rules prevented it from identifying this as an extended range candle and so we have this one here so you find the candle that leaves the area of accumulation which is this one and then you ask yourself is the body of this candle within the range of the previous yes it is we go to the next one but actually first of all is this an accumulation candle yes it is is the body of this candle within the range of the previous yes it is so we go to the next one the previous one is the body of this candle within the range of the previous yes yes so these are all accumulation candles you can see they're white so the first question is already answered and we can also see that <clears throat> we have um, the bodies located within the range of the previous candles and so these are all related and so that means that you can mark from the low of the lowest body to the high like so and these are the ones uh, this is how you would draw the area but if you look very closely at this one you can see that there was rally accumulation uh, drop accumulation drop so you can see that in here there's actually like a, a micro continuation pattern as well and so the keen eye would have said that here we have we actually have the continuation pattern so we're going to mark it like that and this is a child and this is the parent and the price went through the child went to the parent which which happens most of the time and and you can see that um, and then this is what held the first test the the, the following tests um, were too strong we we're reacting on some pretty massive demand here and so we had a, a higher interest on buying than we did on selling and so this area of um, this isn't supply but this area that we've drawn off has been consumed um, by by this here this is where we saw the reaction and this kind of held a little bit and then price managed to move uh, above it like so and so <clears throat> excuse me uh, moving through that way that we've just done is is how you want to do it but the most important thing is is asking the questions you look for the green candle then you do the questions to qualify the areas of accumulation and potential identify potentially identify the parent child relationship because this is very uh, interesting for us and you can see here we have we have out of these two here we have the parent and we have the child <clears throat> excuse me um, the parent sorry the child saw a reaction the second approach it went pretty much to the uh, to the top of the of the child and into the parent and so if we look at this one you can see that all of these are, uh, are linked together so we go from the low of the lowest body to the high and you can see here that we had one test two tests three tests and on the fourth test price uh, managed to move through it and so just try just try doing that and um, and just see how you get on and maybe go back as well historically and do that and then see how price reacted at your level and I think you'll do fine but just look for the green candle or the extended range candle that left and then ask the questions moving back uh, in order to identify uh, the real rather related areas of accumulation okay good so that was um that was that um, and then I have Takuji who has a request that I look at the dollar uh, Japanese yen and the dollar Swiss franc so we're gonna do that quickly and uh, me being a, a long a longer term trader I'll start at the higher time frame and something that's really important to, to remember when you're looking at, at any price chart is you want to ask yourself the question is price imbalance or is it out of balance is price at parity or at disparity and if you look here you can see very clearly that um, the price is currently out of balance <clears throat> excuse me and you can see that when price left here when price came down here 
you can see that price it went down it was out of bounds it rebounced it a little bit it went down it rebounced it it went down it was out of bounds rebounced went down it was rebounced over here um, this was rebounced over here um, so you can see that price has been rebalanced uh, has rebounced all of these but when price formed this bottom here this base it moved up you can see it's it's still not balanced and so you ask yourself well, where which I mean which which swing or which move is the one that's currently out of balance so the most recent and it's this one here and you can see that price was out of balance and it rebalanced and so this is a pretty clear sign that price is going to continue moving lower um, because this one is balanced and now the one that we want to uh, focus on is this one here and so price should come down to here somewhere in order to rebalance that and if price is pushed out of balance or this parity on the way down then this imbalance will have to be rebalanced before we can expect price to move down and rebalance this one which is really um, uh, overexposed here and so we expect price to move down uh, to around around this level here before it figures out what it does and on the way it'll probably leave uh, a wake of um, liquidity voids that need rebalancing or price imbalances that need to uh, return to parity but this is um uh, something for um, um for, for future uh, scenarios but you can see currently um, price needs to needs to come back down here to rebalance this price inefficiency and the reason these are interesting is because I mean we're on the monthly chart so so, so it's a whopping great time frame but in here there is thin liquidity when price moves up really quickly like that there's thin liquidity it's been cleared out and so the thick liquidity is down here so price will move down through this easier than it will move through and beyond this and so this is the path of easy resistance path of a very high resistance here so it'll move down here and it'll stop or react down here so you can see on the on the major picture here that we want to we want to be selling it would have been really nice if price would have gone up a little higher up into here or closer to this uh, this this parent child and then we sold off uh, but it didn't we reacted here and we had a pretty decent reaction um, so we managed to come down to yeah the low so we we kind of price was satisfied uh, coming down down here and this is was good enough for the time being and then price started to sell off so we have um, we have a short bias um, on on the longer time frame here uh, at least down to here and we don't know what's going to happen after that so you go to the weekly chart and we have a look you can see that we have the same thing going on and on the weekly chart you can see that that this looks a little bit better you think like wow price it would have been nice if price would have gone up here but you could see that there were wicks down here and this we can see very clearly here how price was out of bounds rebounced really rebounced we went back to the source here it was, it was out of bounds and then it this rebounced and now price went down and so when price went down it was out of balance we came up to here so this is rebounced then we came down here and now this is out of balance and now price let's see actually if price got back to this it did so this this whole move has been rebound so we can expect price to move lower um, while all while at the same time focusing on these the price returning and deviating from parity on its way down because this is going to um, drive uh, drive price so you can see here that when price was up here we tested this we went down we had a pretty inefficient move here price has not been back up here yet um, we formed this one here and price went down went down here so this one is rebalanced but this one is still needs balancing um, maybe on the daily chart it looks more balanced I don't know but you can see that it would be great if price would maybe come up kind of if I just draw a rectangle there actually matter of fact let me turn off the the rectangle so we have to do this stuff ourselves so if price would come maybe to up here somewhere that would be really nice but it hasn't it's pretty pretty far from but it came to the lows so price rebalanced this and now it's moving lower and uh, it could easily go back to to here because this still needs rebalancing see prices this parity parity is down to here and then it can either kind of go up here to this 
or go down to this somewhere in here in order to rebalance price. But for the time being, you can see that we have we have a downward sloping trend line. Maybe it looks a little bit broken. Yeah, but the price has not really managed to kind of hold above there. It kind of poked out brief, briefly and then it came back in again. And so, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can be you can be selling until a price gets down to about here. Then you have to be a little bit careful. If we go to the daily chart. If we can shine this up a bit, you can see how price kind of broke this trend line. Um, on the daily chart, we have we have something slightly different going on. We have this, which is a daily trend line, which has been broken. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that we have something down here that was strong enough to break the trend line. You can see how we gapped up above that. And so we have somewhere in here, we have something that will probably see a reaction. Um, and so also when price comes back down here, providing that it doesn't go up to here before, it'll come here and then crossing our fingers, um, it'll return back up to here to rebalance this price inefficiency that you can see just here. So that would be nice. If price did come down here before it went up here, then there's a higher likelihood that price is going to leave here and continue moving higher up here before it either goes um, up or continues through this area of daily demand. But um, but we don't know yet. And so you can see that price is drifting lower there. If we go to the four hour chart, um, I had an order to buy there and it missed it by like it didn't get me. I didn't get filled, unfortunately. Um, it was very, very close. I missed this one, so I'm not in this trade, which is a bit of a blow. But on the on the hourly chart, I think this is a pretty, pretty decent one. But you can see here that um, that we're still out of balance. So what we need to do here is we have to we have to look at some. Let me remove these lines here. We have to look at some areas of qualified supply and demand. So we're going to have to do our quick analysis here. So you can see that, okay, we had this, let's see where these went to. Yes, yeah, so we went back to the parent here, this continuation pattern here. It's been tested once, twice, three times, and it broke through it, the area that broke it is this one here. We kind of have two together. I'll just box them both off like this. Um, and this one is no longer valid. So this one is gone. And which one uh, did it? Uh, well, it looks this one did it here, but the origin for this move is, is down here. Um, something weird is going on here because we had a big gap uh, here, but I mean, this one is no longer there. So we can mark this off like that. And this one is long bad because it's been taken out by by this. Here we have we have the parent up here. We have a child thing going on here. So this one is valid still. Um, and this one took this one out. Um, and this one took this one out. So you have to make sure that, that they're lined up correctly and they are validated before you can uh, hook them up. And you can see that we have this low down here. And if you look over to the left here, you can see that we actually have the real demand here. You can see the price went up, accumulated, and it went, it poked down into this level here. So there's something going on in there. We're going to have to have a look inside that. So we're going to go on the four hour chart and have a, a closer look. You can see, ooh, down here we have a really nice one that's completely untested and ready. That's a very nice level there. We have this one here, which has been tested once. We're going to mark that off there. And then we have kind of this mess in here, um, which I'm not too terribly fond of. Then we have a, like a, a micro one in here. You can see that price went, let me zoom in. Oops, price went here. It's been tested once, so we'll mark that one off as well. And then we're getting pretty close to this, but this is this is a bit of a mess uh, in here, as you can see. So you, ideally, you wouldn't want to buy for a price 
any uh, more expensive than the low of this candle. So you could bring this down to uh, the 109.85 ish area. That's a that's an okay area. Um, so that that you could certainly see a reaction there. If we go to where price is currently, I'll show you why I looked at this trade, and it was based on this. And we had we had price came down here, poked into here, and we and we accumulated for one period, then we went straight up again. So there's a lot of price sensitivity here. And you can see, I'll zoom in so you can get a good look. You can see that, look at that. It's so close, yet so far away. <laughs> never mind, never mind. So if we have a look, you can see that when I, mean, I mark this area off, and we're seeing a reaction. And I put my entry just above the low of this candle, because this is showing us where um, the edge of the area is. But I lost it on the spread. You can see I didn't get filled on the spread. If I went like that, and I would have been in it. But a different story. But I didn't. So it went like that. And that one is still holding. So if price manages to uh, react on that and move up, um, it'll probably <clears throat> go up to this area here. Because this here we have a price is at currently a disparity. And parity is back up to here. This is kind of a bit of a mess. But I mean, it looks like we've got maybe around here like that. So if price reacts here, we can um, we could expect it maybe to go back up here to the 112.18 to rebalance that and then in turn rebalance any price imbalances that have been formed on the way up to this area here. But providing this area holds, then uh, we can perhaps see um, maybe price uh, rig a little bit higher up to here. But also, I mean, you have to pay attention to the fundamentals. And I have been a little bit out of uh, tune with the fundamentals over the past couple of weeks due to um, some work obligations, but um, but anyway, so that's uh, I think that's what um what we have going there. So I mean, this would have been a, a decent one, but longer term, you could certainly look for. I mean, this is gone. All this you see, price has been back to this level here. So this is gone, and this is gone. We can remove all of these. So we're going to leave that one there. Oops. So price went to here. So if we scroll over and have a look, this is what it reacted on. It reacted on on this one just in here, just in this accum tiny accumulation candle prior to the green candle. So that's what price tested. And this one here is still waiting. So the 107 is a really good area. And I would definitely expect price to um, uh, to do something to do something there. So Keep your eye on the 107 area, the 106, 95, 107, just to so you don't get a lose out on the spread like me, which happens a lot. Um, and yeah, maybe another test of this, but as you can see, price has already been back. Once you can see there's a lot of poking down into the area, it's still, I mean, only down to here. So down to there, we have kind of uncharted waters. And so between the low of this area and the high of this area, we have a, a pretty decent zone. But 107 is a pretty good target, I think, to uh, to buy. Um, and for selling, well, you can see that we have this continuation pattern here. I'm going to change the color so we know what time frame it's on. We go from here to here, like that. So we have the 112.50 area. That's a pretty decent area. Um, and it's pretty like at the base of this price will probably likely have a tough time moving past this because this is actually we had like resistance sorry support resistance and so this is um maybe a, a, an interesting area to look at it's also the big figure so the 112 area but where would you put your stop you'd have to put your stop kind of above here so that's um maybe 100 pips away for to be certain but instead of doing that I would go to the hourly time frame and have a closer look at that we'll do that quick and then, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe do something, maybe do something like this. So shorts from around yeah, these lows are probably going to see a reaction. So, but maybe let's go like this. So we get the whole area off, something like that. We have that there. And we also have um, a nice cutoff here. Um, here we had the test. Mm. And we have the parent below. Let's have a look what these are doing. 
Okay, so this has been. Let me start mumbling to myself. Let me remove this and put the parent on there. Take the child off. So tested once, and this has been cut off. I mean, we didn't cut through it. This area here is the one that kind of caused the break. So we have, we have two. We have. I mean, this is kind of where the the move started. We'll take the parent and the child. They're kind of related there. But we also have this one here, which is the one that kind of caused it. So you have this one here as well, like that. So you have a couple of areas that you could sell at there. Um, just to draw, we go out a little bit. You can see the one twelve thirty, the one thirteen, and the one thirteen forty to fifty. Uh, those are maybe some perhaps some interesting areas. Anyway, I'll I'll, I'll leave it on that. I'm already like running out of time quickly. So I hope that was all right, um, uh, Takuji. Um, let's have a look at this one here. This is the the dollar Swiss franc. And what are we doing on the dollar Swiss franc? Well, you can see that um, we had this whopping great monthly area that was poked in. We had huge rejection. There wasn't a lot of interest in uh, moving below there. And price is currently moving lower pretty strongly. You can see here, you can see on the, on this monthly chart that we have a, we're having price. It's probably going to close below these lows. So there's something in here that's causing a horizontal trend line break there. Keep in mind that we're getting close to this pretty thinned out area of monthly demand. Um, hold that thought. Oh dear, what a mess. Oh, I got to get rid of those. Okay, so yeah, this has been kind of pretty uh, thinned out as you can see, and so I mean we have we have this here. And I'm sure we have something in here to, closer towards the bottom, and we have that down there, which is really far away. But currently, you can see the price is having a pretty is pretty pleased and continuing lower. So we mark off some major swings. We have uh, duck, 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 duck. so if we take. Yeah, from here maybe to here, or I prefer this one because there's. Oh, that was a bit strange. Ah, oh, David, I know what you mean now. Just saying that. Oh, come on. Oh my goodness. Okay, the last one's fine. Put that back on there. So we go like that. So we have a, a nice downward sloping trend line on the weekly. You can see that we had some pretty interesting areas here that are. We're fighting to hold price. We had test, 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 and then we cut through it. So you go to the hourly. Sorry, the this one here. You have to find the one that's uh, that's consumed it. And here you can see that. Then we mark off this. The indicator would have drawn it in like that. So we'll do the same thing. It's been tested once, and now it's cut through. And you can see that there's. This day stopped, and the day the, the next day started just on the area. So if we go to the four hour, the one hour, we're probably going to see where it is. And you can see that yeah, this is the one here that caused it. This is why I have an entry there to sell. But you can see that we have this one just here. So you can actually remove this one. That's gone. And the area that caused that the break there is this one here. Let's see how big that's pretty 13 four oh, it's really small um, that's a tiny one so let's go to the hourly chart see if we can find some some clarity and you can see here that the I mean this is the one that, that cut through it just here um, but we have actually here this one is still untested um, we have this one here which is also Tested only the one time on the release. So this is a pretty uh, decent one here. Then we have this one here, which is where this really nice strong push uh, originated from. And so ideally, you could maybe be a little bit more comfortable selling up here because this is where uh, price came back to here. And this is a little bit messy and this is clearer. So I mean, that might be a pretty interesting area to, to try and get in there. Um, you can see also that a price is really moving lower. And we are going to box this one off too. So we had this as well down here, this area. 
which is gone. Yeah, and again, it's this one that's done it. I mean, this one did it. So this one just here, where I had the entry previously, is pretty interesting. So you might, you could keep an eye on that at least. Um, maybe not have a limit order end of it. Maybe um, just keep an eye on there and see what price does uh, at that level. So, so that area looks pretty good. Uh, the one above it is is okay as well. And then we have some some other areas. We have this one here. And we have this here. And this one is this one is good because it took this one out. So I like this one. This one. What's this one done here? Yeah, this mean move through these lows. So we have two really good areas just here. At the top there are 99.50 and the 90. Sorry, the one. Uh, the 1,000 just up here. So those are pretty, pretty good areas there, I think. So if price comes up there, you could certainly uh, engage the market based on what's dependent on what's going on on the kind of the macroeconomic side. Um, yeah, but that's what we have there on those two. Um, to the downside, I mean, let's see. It's really messy down here. You can see the price has been. We have this one here, which looks okay. I tested once, two, three times. It's been tested three times, 90, 95, 50 area. So keep your eye on that, but it's been tested a lot of times. But if you have a really nice uh, push down here, uh, pushing price, I mean, if price gets down here at this parity, it should react here. Uh, because it has to rebalance price before continuing a lower. So this might be a decent area to uh, to look at as well. I'll leave it at that so I don't uh, burn all my time off on that. Um, good. And uh, Miroslav, he's been asking about the currency strength uh, histogram. So let's have a look at that. We find a chart. It's got nothing on it. Here. Okay, let me remove, actually I'll leave these on. Okay, so the histogram is a really interesting tool because if you, let's go to a small time frame so we have more data and I'm going to show you the normal MACD. Just so you can kind of look at these next to each other. And you'll see that they look pretty similar You can see that <clears throat> oh sorry, it's because this one is ah, it's because it's been set to show only a static value unless you ch change that setting there. Okay, so you can see here that they look pretty similar, uh, pretty similar indeed, and uh, and you can use them in a very similar way as well. I mean, you, we had this area of demand down here. This is I mean, I'm using it to help me assess if an area of uh, supply or demand is going to hold. So we have this area of demand here at the bottom and price poked into it. So price went lower. It went lower again here, but you could see that, that the strength information was not supporting this. And you can see the same thing in the MACD just here. The difference between the currency strength histogram and the MACD is that the information here is based on um, all of the pairs you can see here. And the information here is based on moving averages from the pound American dollar. So, I mean, this is 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 yeah. I mean, this is very 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 profound information you're seeing here. So, we'll just remove that for now. You can see that I mean, price is having lower lows, but you can see here that uh, the dollar, sorry, the yeah, the dollar is losing strength in relation to the British pound. And we don't know if it's the pound that's picking up in strength or if it's the American dollar that's losing strength that is causing um, the histogram information to turn around. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. We just need to know that that there is a shift happening and the shift happened uh, here. And so knowing that, you go to a smaller time frame. You could already see this happening um, when price poked into the first time. Uh, when you get to here and to here, you could see that, I mean, price has started to kind of uh, form some new bars here. So if you go to the to the one hour chart, um, you can see perhaps something uh, similar going on, but you can't. There's nothing similar going on here at all. Um, so ideally, you want to see uh, the divergence on the time frame that you're entering on, and then you go to the smaller time frame to refine your entry. So assuming that 
um, when price poked down here, we, we figured, yeah, we want to buy there. You wouldn't buy there. You would wait until price came down to an area of, for example, nested demand, which you can see just down here, the white one. And this is exactly where price went to uh, when it released and moved higher. And so on the four hour chart, we could see that, yeah, this area of four hour demand is probably going to hold. And on the one hour chart, we were able to find an entry based on the the supply and demand software it told us exactly where to hold. So here you would have had a, a stop of uh, 20 pips would have been just fine and price went north in a real hurry uh, since it tested that. So so I'm using that a lot uh, for that, so uh, divergence trades. But also, um, if you're trading long term like, um, uh, which is which is common, um, then you can just look at this and say, okay, here you can see that, I mean, the histogram is, is moving lower. So you want to trade in line with the uh, strength, sorry, the histogram information on your trend time frame, which is typically uh, a couple bigger than your entry time frame. And so we can look at this and say, yeah, we have we have strength on on the side of the American dollar in relation to the British pound, so we want to be selling. And then you uh, find your entries to sell at areas of supply and demand. So you could see that, I mean, just here, price was moving down but again here we have divergence you know we have a low we have pretty much lower low so this is a, a warning sign that this may not continue so this is actually a pretty poor example um, if we have a look at this we have a nice steady increase in price see this is this is moving up nicely it's slowing down as you can see here which tells us that we're probably reaching a top um, but until we start to move cross over here um, you can still continue to buy unless prices reacted on monthly supply at the top, uh, which would lead us to believe that price is going to react and move down. Um, here, for example, from about uh, this bar here, you could see that price was uh, moving lower. So when price does this, you just have to position yourself short. And this is where you use the, the currency, sorry, the supply and demand uh, software to, to help us do that. And if we have a look at that leg there, as a matter of fact, let's go here and and put a line there so we can see. So we could see that, I mean, here you could see that we had lower, we had a currency strength diverging, uh, strength to the dollar, weakness to the British pound. If we go to the daily chart, this is where you would refine, look for an entry. And here you can see it nicely, imbalance in supply and demand. We have supply over uh, outpowering demand. And so you would just sell here because you know, again, that on the weekly chart, uh, the histogram is moving lower, telling us that the dollar is uh, stronger than the British pound. So we expect it to keep moving lower. And then ideally, I mean, you don't get out of the trade until it starts to uh, either do divergence on the bottom at demand, or if something uh, macroeconomic happens that would um, encourage price to move in a direction contrary to our position. And so you want to keep an eye on the British pound figures and the American dollar figures. And because it's a longer term trade, I mean, they're not, you're not going to feel them as much as you would on the, say, the 15 minute chart. But you want to be mindful of those. The, the, the figures that are coming out on uh, Forex uh, Factory um, should be supporting your, your trade. So we're short. So we want uh, American numbers to continue to increase and improve and British numbers to continue to, um, uh, to decrease and, and get worse. And so, yeah, you can kind of sit on this until it turns around. And if you go back here, you can see that this happened. This happened. This happened here. And so ideally, I mean, you could have uh, keep on, you could have kept on uh, selling here and selling it like um, at the weekly supply, which is up here. Um, but on the, on the daily chart, you would probably want to be out of the trade because you can see here that I mean, there's a, you can see that we're starting to take out some some pretty significant highs here, um, which would lead us to believe that the price is going to maybe turn around or at least uh, retrace to um, greater period supply before it continues lower. <clears throat> so that's pretty much how um, how I like to use it. It's um it's a tremendous tool for um, for showing you if an area of supply and demand is going to hold, and also for 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 divergence. I really think that it's incredibly powerful tool uh, in that regard. As a matter of fact, one of the, the, the members did a, a very extensive study on on the use of the currency strength histogram. 
and then so I will speak with him and if I have his permission I'll either ask him to, to share his results or uh, share the results uh, with you if um, if this is something that I'm uh, have the permission to do but I'll uh, I'll get back to that okay good that brings us to uh, to Luke's request and Luke has a bunch of pairs that he wants us to, to have a look at so we'll we'll have a look at those quickly um, let's do a quick change here good go like that okay so let's see you want to have a look at the euro American dollar so let's have a look at the euro American dollar initially it's here okay what's going on let's go look along the weekly chart you can see that price is really roaring higher it's really moving higher um, and you can see that we're gapping up as well so I mean, we have tremendous strength to the upside keep in mind that we are approaching some some pretty significant supply but and the big but price has already been back to these levels in the past where it has not been back to is here it has not been back there so when price gets there you want to really yeah you want to make sure that you're not buying because here and here was what managed to take this out and I'm not exactly sure let's just zoom out a lot mark off the low here and scroll back and see what that is so we had a pretty here's on the so okay so we had this here come on go away so we had these okay so these are reactions to this child and actually this is where it is this is a really nice one tested once taken out on the second approach the child saw a lot of attention here afterwards and we have so we have the parent the child the younger sibling we take the younger sibling which is where we test on the way back it's tested once and then we saw a nice reaction here there's probably something in there on the daily chart that price reacted to in here um, and these are all gone price cut through all of these we had this one here as well which is now gone and price went all the way down to roughly maybe the highs of this not quite so we went back to the low this one here so price have, has not been back to a price any cheaper than the low of this accumulation bar so if we mark there it's probably pretty close to where yeah, price went to so here um, and so you want to we could maybe put it like that here's for the demand we're touching the upper edge of this the 10200 area and our price is reacting and it's wriggling up uh, ever so carefully and you can see that if we look on the monthly chart we have this area of supply and this whole move originated from here and that's what took out this parent and this child so these are gone and now we only have that we have a weekly supply in here so we go to the weekly chart and have a look we can see the pr well, price is really storming higher and we have this one here and we have this up here more accurately we can draw it like this now been tested we have a micro area here price has been back to this price level so you don't want to sell for a price any che cheaper than the 12600 area um, the price seems to be wriggling higher so let's have a look here and see what we have you can see that the price is getting close to all of this clutter we have we have this which looks okay so if we go you know let me remove let me make this a little bit more difficult we'll remove some of these okay so here we have I mean this looks like when you put the significance up I mean here we have a pretty interesting area this is a weekly area this has been tested a couple of times and the high of this went pretty much to the low of this weekly area here you have a close that you can see that with this candle poked up into here to this accumulation so on the daily chart we have a pretty nice area right right there what's that the 11486 so that's a pretty nice area and that's nested within this monthly area as you can see just here so you might see a re we'll probably see a reaction there you can see also we're getting pretty close to this one here and so we'll probably see a reaction of this weekly area if we have a look what that was yeah, I don't know if we're going to because it's not very nice on this chart you can see that we have 
yeah, the edge of the weekly area, the monthly area is actually pretty interesting because it's where what's going on here. You can see the prices have been back kind of to here once, twice. <coughs> so 114.40 ish area, the edge of the, the monthly area uh, might be pretty, pretty interesting. Um, so I think that for the time being, we can see the price is racing higher. Um, we have this really nice <coughs> gap here to close the gap we'll have to come back down to here you can see the price is pretty out of balance for the time being even on the weekly chart um, price is out of balance I mean all this stuff has been balanced up to here I mean this has been rebalanced you can see price came back up there price went up down out of balance is rebalanced out of balance rebalanced out of balance rebalance out of balance and rebound so and <laughs> we, we want to look higher we want to look higher to an area that is still out of balance we don't have that until we get up here <clears throat> but shorter term you can absolutely positively go in here so if we go to the, the the daily chart oops and have a look you can see that we do I mean this is out of balance still I mean everything until here has, has been rebalanced so the only real area that is worth looking at in my opinion is around around here this top here because price price has already been here so price is going to easily move through this and it's going to have a tough time here you can see when price left here there's black space here it's above all of this price this choppiness so you want to look deeper and if you go to the four hour chart you're probably going to find an even clearer area and you can see it right there from here to there. So on the four hour chart we have the area just up here which is the one fifteen sixty area. And so pretty good areas to, to sell at I'd say. Yeah this is a really nice area just up there. As a matter of fact the indicator will probably draw that for us if we enable it. Let's see so that's probably going to be on the chart. Did it? Now we've got the daily area just, just below it, so that's good enough. So the area is marked off. So I think that's um that's what we have there. Uh, Luke on the the Euro American dollar. Okay. Let's have a look at the Euro Australian dollar. I know a certain gentleman in Japan who also likes uh, likes that one. Let's have a look at that. What's going on here? Are we bounced or imbalanced? You can see that. Oh, wow, this is really nice. You can see how price is struggling to get through there. This area of supply did it. To go from here to here. Nice test. Now it's gone. What area took that out? You can see that. I mean, it's it's from down here. We haven't had any. We haven't had any closes above the area. The price has been back to this area. I mean, this area is gone, and so we have. I mean, the accumulation that caused the break of that is this one here. It's been tested quite a few times. Once, two, three times. Now that's gone. The area that took out that demand is this here. This supply is pretty much gone. What area did it? This one down here. We probably have a continuation pattern in here. You can see the these bars changing here. So you have that monthly at the bottom. So if we go here and have a look. Before we do that, let's mark off. Like that. We go down here, we can see. Okay, so now we can see it there. <coughs> this one here. It's not super pretty, but you can see it's price sensitive, and that's pretty much gone. So this weekly area that did it is here. So this is a really nice place to consider the buy at the one forty-eight sixty-two around there. You see how price rallied, accumulated, rallied, and we haven't been back there. There's all this black space, <clears throat> so we're going to mark that off just here like that. One forty-eight seventy, and go to the daily chart. You can see it looks pretty interesting. You can see how price rallied and it's accumulating. But you see how we've accumulated for a long period of time. If price manages to move up and away, 
if it comes down, it's going to come straight. I think it's going to come straight through this and come back to here. And so your, your trade should be around here, maybe a nested area within this weekly area. So we go to the four hour. We can probably find it and you can actually see just here on the four hour chart that we have this little fella right here. Like that. And this is the one that uh, managed to get price to close above here. Above that, we have this, which is still holding. Tested once, twice, blah, blah, blah. It's been tested a lot, which is why it probably won't hold on the next approach. So the better solution would be to go here. And alternatively, we have this one down here. And you can see actually down here, we have some accumulation here. <laughs> you can keep on going forever, you know, keep going backwards. But if you keep going backwards, um, then you'll never, ever, ever get into any trade. So you have to focus on the area that is closest to price. And the one that is closest to price is this one, but this one has been tested too many times, which brings us to this one. And this one is fine. Let me see how big this is. It's 30 pips. It's pretty small. So if you wanted to, you could take that and kind of get the risk out quickly because price might come up and kind of go down and maybe feed into this or this. Or you could wait for the daily area, which is at the bottom here, which has also been tested once before. Um, but this is pretty nice because we had these pretty important swing highs and they've been taken out. Prices closed above those and the origin of this push is is from here. So you could certainly look at that, the 14800 area. And I'm sure some of you have noticed, you're probably saying to yourselves, isn't it funny how all these big reactions or a lot of these big reactions often, ha often happen around the big figure? And yes, it is. It's very funny. And they often do happen around um, big figures. So just keep that in mind. If there's an, an area like this that overlaps nicely with the big figure like so, then it's a, another good reason to, um, to consider the trade if price does come back to it. Okay, so you have the Euro Canadian dollar now. Let's have a quick look at that. Euro CAD. Um, what's going on here? Well, you can see that price, is it balanced or imbalanced? Let's remove these so we can focus. You can see that, I mean, price left here and it's been rebalanced here. And then we have this has been rebalanced. Price went higher back up to this one. Price went down, rebalanced. And we can see down here, price went up, out of balance, and it rebalanced, but we haven't come back down to here. So we have a pretty, <clears throat> sorry, interesting area down here. On the monthly, the one, again, 12500 area. And now price is leaving really quickly. So price is currently out of balance. It's moving higher. So you want to be, uh, you want to be buying um, for the time being. And it looks like there's quite a lot of space until we get up into kind of these wicks here. So we have a bullish bias. Also, you see how we have high lows here and the highs are getting taken out. So uh, demand is being respected and supply is being consumed by the buying. So bias, keep that in mind, how we want to be buying. And here we have a downward sloping trend line that has been broken. And what area did it? Well, the origin of that move started from here. Which we'll take off that whole bar. That's a really nice one there. If price comes back down there, you should certainly look um, for confirmation to buy uh, just up there. You can see also up here at the top, the indicator will probably draw a line like this, an area like that. The 15900 area, again, big figure. Um, but price is having a pretty good time and it's pretty happy to keep on going for a while. Um, you have this in here, but there's a very big wick. And so you're going to want to go to a smaller time frame and have a look. So we'll do that. And you can see we need to find opposing areas of supply to look at. Okay, so we have, we have this one here. This one is gone. Which one did it? This lovely one just here. Okay, and then we had we had this here. This is not supply, but it's it was a high. Um, and now that's gone. The area that did it is this one here. Um, that's holding. 
So we have that to look at, the 149.70 area. <clears throat> now price is kind of moving higher and figuring out what it's going to do. We also have this one here, and this this is the demand the accumulated just um, just after uh, breaking the trend line. So we can also mark this one off. We go from here to, you know what, we're going to go here to, to here because this is where price came back to. Oops, where do we go like that? And so we have a couple of areas of demand that we could look at. This one's been tested. This one has, but this one has not. So the one 4700 has not been tested, and this one's been tested, and so is this one. But I mean, these these might hold. I mean, we had a really nice reaction when price left here. We managed to move above this high. We managed to cause a, a continuation pattern after we tested this one, which is a pretty good indication that uh, we have a lot of buying going on at the, at the in this area here. So we go to the four hour chart and have a closer look. You can see that we have um, a lot a lot going on. You see how price kind of, okay, this is good because now we can have a, a good look at proper areas that we want to look at. So this high was taken out by this child. So we have a parent here. Tested, tested, tested. Where did it break? It broke right here. This one broke it. Sorry. Yeah, this one broke it. This is where we got the test. Been tested once, twice. Now this is gone. What does that mean? Well, that means that we have this demand here. Um, we'll go like this. Um, currently, that's uh, that's holding price. So this is the one that's currently um, valid. Has not been tested yet. It's nice. We might, if price continues to move like that, we might not get past that because you can see that there's accumulation, there's demand here, which is what took out this high. So we'll see this on the hourly chart, and you can see it right there. So like that. And if we go to smaller time frame, we're going to find ES. You can see it right there. See that? Oh, it's 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 incredible how these levels just the clarity when you go to the smaller time frames. Here we have it. We have this one tested once. We have this one here, right there. This one caused a break of this high, one fifty one hundred, the big figure. That'd be a nice trade to look at there. You want to put your stops um, below this. Um, or you, I mean, you might want to ma manage this a little bit aggressively just to make sure. Um, you do have this one as well down here at the bottom, which is what this whole leg is standing on. And when price comes back to here, then this whole move will be rebalanced, um, increasing the likelihood of price kind of moving away and continuing off for a while. Um, if you look a little bit lower, we do have, we have a parent, child, child here. It's kind of a, a big messy one, but we'll go like that. Price reacted on the child. Price has not been back to it's like this area in here. So there's a few things there to look at. And we have this one in the 15100 area, which is pretty pretty cool to look at. And because price is so strong, um, certainly um, uh, have a look at that. Uh, maybe manage it a little bit carefully, just to be on the safe side. Also, there's a big wick in here, so you might want to go to the smaller time frame just to see if you can refine it a little bit. And doing that would bring your entry down a few pips, maybe around here, the 150.93. So I mean, a couple of things to, to look at there. Um, what else? Now we have the, the, the Kiwi dollar. Let's see. Ooh. Let's have a look here. OK, what's going on for price? Is price balanced or imbalanced? Well, for this move here, price is currently balanced. This has been rebalanced. But do we have any any other price imbalances that we want to uh, consider? Well, we have not a lot of clarity on the monthly chart. But you can see this one has been rebalanced. So this would have been a really good. Once this happens, then it's a really good uh, time to look for uh, price imbalances down here that need filling because this will. Uh, encourage the likelihood of price continuing down and uh, to rebalance those. So this is, yeah, this, I mean, price left here, 
now as disparity parity disparity pretty much parity um, disparity parity disparity parity it's this is all balanced this is still out of balance so when price comes up here we could certainly see a reaction because price has not been here yet but you can see here that sorry let me remove these so we can force ourselves to do it so we have a parent child thing here you got this one here and we have the child just below just here um, I like this one better this, this is just because this is very close to it I mean you can see the price has already been up here quite a lot um, but again we're on the weekly chart so anything anything can happen so you can see that we're, we're, mar we're managing to move up pretty strongly here so if we go to the da daily chart we still have a, a bias to, to the upside we do have this up here that needs rebalancing and that will have happened once if pri once price gets back to here I think shorting at the 71 just shy of the 7200 area would be pretty pretty interesting price might not get any further than this though um, simply because that is also technically speaking rebalancing price <clears throat> but the point of origin of the move is up here at this supply um, parent child kind of thing there um, so we have I mean here we have this the trend line which has been broken so let's go down to a smaller time frame and see what did that you can see that we have this here let me remove that that's a silly trade why did I put that in there I don't know I can't see it anymore we'll take that off <clears throat> so we have this one here which is um, demand has been tested once um, and then price is racing up towards here and then we down down here you can see the price is wriggling up a little bit and we have we have the child here it's been tested once uh, price is out of balance for this move and for that to be rebalanced it's going to have to come back to here so that's still valid 7026 still untested we also have this little one like a smaller trade just in here so like the 7067 and it gets getting pretty close to the top and we are approaching a kind of the lows here so that's a little bit just be careful if you do that because that's very close I'd be buying very close to the top so just be a little bit careful um, you can see that I mean this whole move originated from kind of around here so we have we have something in here we can't take the whole area like that something like that 69.37 so there are a few things going on um, but I would I'd probably yes, be a little bit careful with these because these are pretty close I mean this is kind of the very earliest I'd want to uh, the bar to buy this uh, and if we look down here a little bit you could see that we do have I mean, we do have this here which is down pretty far 68.27 area the price has kind of kind of traded a lot in here but I mean you can see this is out of balance it needs rebalancing and, and when that happens we're gonna see a reaction so I mean here are a couple of areas that you could uh, look at um, on that I'm kind of running out of time let me we'll go the Aussie dollar quickly hope I'm not going over these too quickly I just want to make sure that we try to keep this within an hour okay you can see that price is just rebalance this so we had prices out of balance now it's rebalanced so when it left here it was out of balance now it's rebalanced when it when it rebalanced this move we caused a price inefficiency which is now balanced but we still need to come down here in order to do that so what does that mean well that means that I mean, it means a lot of things what well, we have looking up here we have a really nice one up here it's a lovely area um, 87.50 area um, and, and price is pretty much kind of ranging between this one and this one so ideally you'd want to be um, buying at the bottom and selling at the top it's pretty traded out here at the top you can see these wicks almost going to the top of the rectangle but if we 
let me remove these so we have to find these ourselves. Oops. <clears throat> like that. So we have we have that there, but we're probably gonna have a tough time getting any higher than that. Around there, like the 8630-ish area. And then we have accumulation, it's been tested. So prices out of balance, that's been rebalanced, out of balance not really rebalanced this is out of balance has been rebalanced here so everything up to around here has been rebalanced now we just need to look at kind of this one here and once that is rebalanced price is probably going to come up here because this one has already been rebalanced by this one we might get maybe another test and a small reaction but price will um, maybe wriggle up here go to the, the daily chart and have a look you can see that we had this we spoke about this one really nice trade here it worked out pretty nicely tested 30 73 40 area um, we had this one as well when price left it was out of balance where would the rebalancing have taken place when price came back here looks like we took the the wick like that again 7500 area pretty close now price is moving lower um yeah what else do we have well we have i mean this needs rebalancing we haven't really gotten now we have gotten back to the lows here but we still need to come back to this high here we've been all the way up here yeah so price might could easily just continue moving higher after this and um, we have what do we have in the four hour chart not a whole lot not a whole lot because everything has been pretty much uh, rebalanced except for a move up to here We need to have a look at that. Where is that? 77, 18. Yeah, so there's um Okay, sorry about that. My son just wanted a glass of water, he's all tucked away in there. Um okay, so what do we have? We have I mean price coming back up to here would rebalance this, which we need 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 to do still. Um, we also have this down here, which is still needing to be rebalanced. It hasn't happened yet. We've only come back to here. But technically speaking, we have kind of tested this area of demand a couple of times, once, twice. So we have to be a little careful there. Um, let's draw a line in here and see. So this is the 7400 area. If we go back here and have a look price has been pretty through here and you see this is I mean this is pretty efficient trading um, you don't want to take anything in here because price is going to cut through that pretty easily so if we go to the that daily area we can see what do we have we have this which looks nice I like that a lot so if we go if we go to the four and see what that looks like Maybe the the daily even. It uh wow it brings us all the way down here. So this is a, a pretty interesting area, the 7250 area. So we're probably going to get some kind of reaction in there. And you could probably get a pretty small stop on there. We're on the hourly chart, so you could go from, for example, here to maybe down here. That would give us a. maybe a 50 pip stop I think that's a that's pretty interesting yeah the 72.50 here so have a have a keep an eye on there um yeah I think that's um that's what we have going on there um so we have I'll do one more uh Luke and then um I think I'll, I'll call it a day because we're I don't want these to be too long and I'm also pretty slow at going through these just because I think it's fun so if we have a look here See, this is really interesting what's going on here. Um, okay, it's price at parity or at disparity. You can see that price is currently at disparity for this move here. Of course, we're on the monthly chart, so it could take a long time to get back up there. But I mean, this has been rebalanced more or less. We've reached kind of the, 
the top this is probably a six month accumulation that's been tested now and so which is which is likely satisfied price and now we're moving away from that which brings our attention to, to this area up here that was very loud let me turn that off I hope I just press mute on my computer I hope you can still hear me otherwise this is gonna be a pretty boring presentation okay good so we have this one here so we go to the weekly chart and have a look you can see that we're reacting off this very nicely this is a, a pretty a pretty nice uh, rebalancing of of this move lower here and above that we have this little beauty which is just waiting there for us to to take a stab well where'd we go so if we go for the low of this accumulation bar here maybe the low there just be on the safe side that would um yes anywhere in there really we shan't get too light nitpicking about it but somewhere around there like the 190 300 area that'd be a very very nice place to sell there and that would have a rebalance uh, this um, cuz you see when price left here um, we managed to poke up into the bottom of this accumulation we still need to go up here up here let me remove these so we have to do this ourselves still got to go up there the two the 2000 area and we have this one just below which is a really nice area this is at the base of this uh, this monthly supply and hopefully we're gonna we're gonna manage to get up there you can see let's see where price reacted here it reacted it kind of this just above this accumulation here you can see when price had this accumulation this candle went up and then it poked into it and this gr this this is yeah similar to a green candle and the low of this candle is probably pretty close to where price went to okay just shy of that just above that so it took the uh, the accumulation candle just above and and this is where we saw uh, the decent reaction so price is um has a, a long bias and so if we have a look here you can see mm, so here we had an upward sloping trend line which qualified this area supply supply been tested once then we have this one up here which is still fresh I think yeah the one uh, the one AT28 pretty small area there what is that that's a really small area uh, oh it's not at all that's right this is the the pound Aussie this one really really moves so we have this one up here there's something in here on a small time frame you'll be able to get some clarity there and so if we have a quick look you can see that I mean here price had a tough time moving above here and it managed to do so from here so this is a, a nice one this is also I mean rebalance this so I, I think that that would be uh, definitely worth looking at and we also have um, let's find this properly we also have this one here which has been taken out by by this one as well <clears throat> which is good so let's do some backtracking we have this area of supply that was taken out by this one and this was taken out by this one and this one was taken out by this one again good so we've yeah so we're I mean this is the one that we should look at what I don't like is all this accumulation before it so I would feel um, I don't know maybe let me something like this something around here like this uh, the 163 uh, to the let's see what the low of this one is yeah, 162.50 ish area and so that looks also pretty nice I don't really like this very much so this this might work it might it might not but this is really I don't like this upward drifting accumulation there's a lot of kind of parents and children going here this is pretty efficient uh, micro trading here we left we tested then we went higher um, but we might we'll probably get a reaction here but I'd I'd feel I'd be, be more comfortable taking something a, a little bit lower here where price has not been back to um, yeah, but we'll have to we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We have a look on the on the four hour. We can 
find some levels we have this one here which jumps out at us it's been tested almost once that's a pretty nice area I think the 7054 area again we, we do have a, a long bias and you can see here that this one came back to the 165.88 area on the release so that's also a nice zone again this is at that top of that really kind of unpleasant kind of bullish accumulation um, so, but you could go to the smaller time frame and have a look at that and we, maybe we can have a let's have a quick analysis look at this and see what's going on in there so we have okay so we had accumulation it's been taken out by what by it's difficult to see it's like because it's so tight and messy by these are all linked together by I will just take this one here this is kind of the one that sticks out tested so that's still holding that's above it yeah it's not pretty it's not very pretty down in there now we're, now I'm forcing it which I shouldn't be doing um, so but you can see we have this one here so I, I won't put that there I don't like that we have this here we have the parent sorry the child just here which is doing that um, what's the area? The 63, 60, uh, 31. Um, we have the, the parent just below, and this is not reacting on anything. It's maybe reacting on maybe one hour or 30 minute uh, demand, which originates from here. There's something going on in here, which it looks like it's probably could be reacting on. So you could do something like this. Um, which would bring us to the 161.80 level. That looks pretty all right. It's been tested a couple of times, but it looks all right. Um, anyway, so we have a few things uh, to look at there. We do have a, um, a pretty strong bias to, to buy. Um, and this whole move originated kind of from this little area of accumulation. You could call this probably weekly accumulation here. We had one, two, three periods of weekly accumulation. And so you could, we could go like this even. We just box this off like this. And we have an entry there, the 165.16 area. Um, or maybe even the highs of these. 165.67. And then be done with it. We got a big stop, so price will uh, maybe have a tough time getting down there. Um, yeah, so the f a few options there as well. Good. Well, I think I'll wrap it up. We're also an hour and 17, 18 minutes. Um, but I hope I managed to uh, get to everyone's questions. Uh, if not, please let me know, and I will um, absolutely positively get to them next time. And, and I'm hoping that, that things are going to slow down for me a little bit in the, in the uh, next week and the coming. I know I have to do a bit of work next week, security work, but I'm hoping that after that it's going to slow down. Um, so I can get to these uh, live symposiums because I really, really enjoy them. Good. Okay, I'll I'll leave it at that. Uh, remember, the key is uh, it's it's updated now, so you'll have that. It's already on the website now, and it's still the 31st of of May. So everything should be hunky dory when you when you wake up in the morning and are ready, uh, scrambling for the new key. It's it's there now. Good. Well, um, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any feedback or comments uh, about something you want to see or something you don't want to see, uh, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll be pleased to, to get back to you and incorporate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.